All right, it's Thursday, Thursday, the Donovan Sadiq show, and, uh, no, is this the hot seat? I'm not exactly sure which show I'm on here. Either or, it's all the same. It's, it's still me, I'm Donovan Sadiq, I'm going to be your host today. A lot of news going on in regards to the Kanika Jenkins case. For those of you guys who haven't heard, Kanika Jenkins was the girl in Chicago that was found in a freezer. Now, this week... She, her mother basically called off the protests based on improprieties and so-called improprieties and what was going on with all that stuff. So, uh, and we don't know if that's a fact. I mean, it's he say, she say versus this, this, this. These activists, as soon as there's trouble, Al Sharpton, Jesse Jackson, you know, they've all been, uh, basically proven to be, uh, as bad as these prosperity pastors in regards to just, you know, trying to make a buck and, you know, they, they come where the, the trouble is. And then once they get paid off, they leave. So basically they go there and say, Hey, uh, if you don't give me some money, it's going to cost your business and it's going to do this to you. And, you know, basically, they, basically it's a strong arm tactic what, what these guys do and they expect to be paid for the, for their time going out there. I, I have yet to find activists that are actually doing stuff without, getting something in return, be it monetary or notoriety. So a lot's going on with that. Now, there's been a lot of rumors in regards to this case. Now, it was said that there was a videotape that uh, showed her going into the freezer. Now, everybody that has a business, a bank, wherever you have your product and your money, there's always video surveillance of that area. Uh, in hotels, there's videotapes all over the place. Jesus Christ, just walking in the streets nowadays, Big Brother is looking at you all the time. That's why I laugh hysterically whenever I hear uh, people say, oh, you don't have permission to videotape me. You don't have permission to videotape me. There is no expectation of privacy in public, you idiot. Okay? So as long as I'm on the sidewalk and I'm in public, I can videotape whatever my eyes see. If you don't want to be in my videotape or you don't want to be in my video production, get the hell out of the way. So, you know, there's a lot of ignorant people out there that think they know the law and they really don't. And uh, I'm one of the few people who know a little bit. I'm not saying I'm an expert. I took law in college, but uh, we know, I know a little bit about it. But a lot of theories in regards to uh, how this lady, uh, young lady has died. Uh, I put out some theories out there. Uh, I was one of the main ones that said on the show that without that videotape showing her walk in to that freezer, as they said she did, there's always going to be speculation this is an open case. But thank God for the uh, Matlock detectives on social media and on the internet because they have proven that the videotape is doctored. Now throw everything else away. However you want to think, oh, this happened, that happened, they murdered her, they raped her, they did this to her, blah, 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 blah. Without that tape, we don't know how she died, nor what happened. But we do know this. The tape has been doctored. Okay? So throw everything out. The question you need to be asking yourself right now is, number one, who doctored the tape? And number two, why? We also know that the tapes are in possession of the hotel. Now, am I saying that the hotel had something to do with it? If the tapes have been altered, common sense is you're going to have to come to that assumption, correct? Correct. Because why are they covering this up? And I'm, for one, I just will not believe that a multi-million dollar hotel is going to cover up for... uh, gangsters and thugs and young, you know, young people doing stupid shit. That's just my personal opinion. They're, you know, it's not worth the liability. They, they're already facing a liability issue. So it's just funny how that came about. But also what was said was that the, the girl in some of the video is an actress or it was recreated. And uh, reports are going out that the police restaged this uh, event to show what happened to her, what likely happened to her. Now, to me, that just doesn't make sense because that would be 
uh, leading into cor- corruption of justice, because if it didn't happen that way, the police are giving you a false narrative. And even if that's what they speculate, why would they release what they recreated? Because that's not factual. Why are they putting that into people's minds and putting more doubt on this case? These are the questions you need to ask. The only two questions that you need to ask that are important in this case as of right now. Why was the tape edited and who did it? Why? The question is why? What do they have to gain out of this? So, I mean, the more you try to answer the questions, the more it opens up with more and more and more stuff. So uh, a lot of stuff is going on, and uh, it's really tragic what happened to that girl. But a a real quick announcement. She's having a her funeral in her wake. It's going to be at 752 East 114th Street in Chicago, Illinois, 60628. The hours of the wake is going to be from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m., and that's going to be Saturday, 9-30-17, 30th, this Saturday. Uh, and then the funeral is going to be from 12 to 1 p.m. And according to her mother, all are welcome to come and attend. It's not a big deal. She doesn't have a problem, uh, I guess. And um, it's just tragic, tragic, tragic. Now, another girl, has 19-year-old, has come up missing. And her name is... Ashanti Billy, and she's a military dependent. The last time she was seen was on the joint base Little Creek in uh, Virginia Beach, Virginia. What is going on with these young people and them missing and coming up missing? And it's, whoo, this thing is just, it's mind blowing because, you know, I know our children are out there and they are more lost than my generation. And it seems like every generation is getting worse and worse and worse. And what I mean worse, meaning common sense wise, they just I'm not saying all of them. I'm just saying some of them are just losing their common sense. So now this young lady is missing and her parents who are both in the military uh, or were in the military, whatever their situation was, they're both military veterans. They are looking for their daughter. And that is a question that needs to come up and be asked. So if you've seen uh, this young lady, please, please, please put some information out. We really need to regroup. We really need to do that. But again, uh, the funeral and the wake for uh, uh, Kanika Jenkins is this Saturday. The wake is at 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. And the funeral itself is 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. It's going to be at the House of Hope. And I believe Reverend T. Meeks is the reverend or pastor of that thing, and that's at 752 East 114th Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60628. If you don't know where it's at, Google it. I'm sure you'll find it. And God rest her soul, and let this be a tragic, tragic reminder of what can happen when you are not paying attention or you're at a party doing drugs, not knowing what you're taking, and you're just putting your own life in your hands. And I'm not saying that's what happened, but there's a lot of theories that uh, dealing with Miss Jenkins that has gone out, and I'm sure you've seen them on the web. They're saying that she's in the witness protection program. They're saying all kinds of crazy stuff. And it's sad that people are putting this stuff out just to get likes or to get their uh, situation going. Now, I'm out in California, so I don't really have a dog in the fight, but I do think that that was an interesting story. And if the matlocks of the internet had not kept this story alive, I have no doubt in my mind this story would have been buried. Buried. Just another black girl dead. Simple as that. So uh, I I just want to give a quick uh, shout out to Mino Stereo. Mino Stereo, let me tell you something. My car car sounds went out. And, uh, you know, I emailed and... um, called up Mino and I said, hey, you know, I got, you know, my car sounds are out, you know, you're right, right around the corner. Uh, I, need, I need the hookup. Went over there. I mean, did a fantastic job. Gave me the system that I need for my car, put it in, did the wiring. Everything was great. I mean, I'm talking about boom, 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 out the door, reasonable prices, hooked it up. So if you, if you need a radio and some car sounds, rims, tinting, hey, He's a legend. He's been in business 27 years right here in Moreno Valley. He's a small business owner. And I'm telling you, he's going to do it right. Because trust me, I could usually install my own stuff. But I'm also a big supporter of uh, mom and pop stores and, uh, you know, business owners rather than corporations. And I'm telling you, I went in there within three hours of uh, dropping the keys off to him. 
calls me up, says your, your ride is ready, anything else I can do for you, cannot be no more satisfied. I mean, just it's just an awesome deal. So uh, check out Menial Stereo. It's right here in Moreno Valley in the Inland Empire. Check him out. I'm going to have this stuff up on the uh, thing for you guys. I'm telling you, I'm not saying that because, you know, you know, he's been in the uh, in the neighborhood for a long time. I'm telling you, boom, boom, boom. Just like he said, it, it happened. And hey, no problems. It, it was a great off. I mean, gave me every, exact, everything that I needed. OK, so even though my car is a 2003, uh, it is upgraded with the car sounds. I mean, you know, Bluetooth, the whole shebang. It's just he just hooked it up. So if you guys are looking for a thing. Mino Stereo, that's, that's the place to go. He's a legend, 27 years in business. Come on out and support local businesses. So uh, in the IE, basically, we have an election coming up. And I know everybody's you know, getting over the summer. The kids have gone back to school. You know, you guys got a lot on your plate. And um, the latest thing I was told was uh, I got a question that was posed to me and another threat, of course, that there's somebody's going to sue me for slander and, oh, I need to cease and desist and things like that. Okay, I'm going to break this down for those that are listening. <sighs> if you want me to cease and desist, I do not need a letter from you. I need a letter from your lawyer. What you have to say doesn't mean jack crap to me. So if you want me to take you seriously, a letter from your uh, lawyer with a court date would pretty much uh, solidify it for me. So uh, empty threats and all this stuff, you're going to sue me. You can go ahead and try. I've been doing this for almost two, three years now and haven't been sued yet because in 1966, the Supreme Court upheld the fact that you can actually lie on public officials and there's nothing they can do about it. But they can refute what you're saying in the news and on TV and stuff because they have a way to refute that. So uh, not, that I, that, that, not that that's what I do. I lie on them. But if I'm dropping documents on you and those documents are factual, you shouldn't have a problem with that. So again, for those of you that want to throw these threats out indirectly or whatever, hey, I have nothing better to do but to go and sit in court for a couple of days and drag you with me or your lawyer, whoever it is, and waste your time and your money. Because if you're a public official, that's what I'm going to do. If you have a public record, it's just the same as if somebody uh, said stuff about me and people say stuff about me all the time and I just don't give a damn. Why should I? If it's not true, it's not true. That's all there is to it. So... Uh, Quit with the threats. That's all I got to say. Just quit with the threats. So uh, here in the Inland Empire, um, a lot of stuff is going on. We've got a lot of elections. Uh, Moreno Valley has three elections coming up, one for mayor and two for city council. And uh, some people are out the gate. Some people are doing in District 2. Corey Jackson is uh, doing his. And um, I forgot what's her name's thing, but she's running in District 4. Please forgive me. I don't have my notes on that So I'm talking off the cuff. But um, so far, those are the two that we have. And I believe Kid Kriberis, you know, the kid that is uh, 22 years old, could barely wipe his ass, he's probably going to run for re-election with Edo Money and Money from Long Beach. And, of course, uh, Mayor Gutierrez, idiot Mayor Gutierrez, he probably going to run for re-election because he thinks that he's going to be the next big thing in California and people just love what he's doing and it's a bunch of bullshit. So for those of you in Moreno Valley, I hope you guys also re realize that this idiot mayor with his master, Ido Benvizi, went up to Sacramento to lobby them not to sign AB uh, 890, which is Jose Medina's uh, bill that closes the loophole that lets these developers go around CEQA. So he's up there speaking for us, which is a bunch of bullshit. He's speaking for his donor. Why don't you guys have a problem with that? See, this is why the guy's full of shit, because if he was really for the people, he would represent the people, not his donors. But yet his master calls, and so he has to go get on his knees and take it in a keister. 
And that's what he does day in, day out. Like I said, it's just it's just something that he loves to do. And if that's if that's your thing, more power to you. You know, so uh, we've got to get uh, good candidates out there and uh, get this guy out of office. Now, I'm going to tell you guys this. I've proven it once. I've proven it twice. I've proved it several times. Denise Fleming is highly qualified on paper, but she is an unethical candidate and she has lost already. So we need to find new candidates. And I'm going to tell you, um, Jerry Mercado in District 1, he is somebody that I'm backing. And uh, if he runs when the district comes up, we got to get Victoria Baca out of there. I'm going to ask you guys in District 1, what has Victoria Baca done since she's uh, retaking uh, that office other than what Ito tells her to do? And I don't even want to even get graphic with what she does for Ito. You know, I've heard some stories, but whatever, whatever, Um, because she's not worth my time. She's a criminal. And ever since she got reelected or put back and stole the election, uh, she's done absolutely nothing. And this district is going down down the shithole. It's just all the work that uh, I and LaDonna Jimson did has basically been for naught. So that's where we're at with that. And I'm very sure you guys have heard about the uh, district attorney at the ROV, which is the Registrar of Voters, Uh, looking into corruption there. Now, I and some other people have long wrote letters and uh, talked to the district attorney and made complaints in regards to how these elections have gone. Twelve people in a house with the same address voting. It just doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. So you guys have really, really have to vet these candidates and what they stand for. Do they stand for what you want them to stand for? I mean, let's face it. Jose Medina's uh, AB 890 doesn't save Moreno Valley. Now, why Ito and this idiot mayor would go up there and lobby against it? I mean, the WLC has nothing to do. It, 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 It wouldn't even affect the WLC, so... Uh, like I've said, I'm going to be here 25 years and I'm going to find out if this, I don't think it's ever going to be built. And that's what I think the problem is because now since the loophole and it passed both, both houses waiting for, um, Moonbeam Brown to sign it, which he probably will. Uh, I think, you know, that's going to cost Ito more money. And when he tries to sell off parts of the parcels and the parts of the land, because now these people have to do these environmental studies and they can't go around it. So I I think there's something more to it than what uh, we see in general. But I'm going to do a a special and I'm going to show you the very people that have destroyed this city. And I I don't want you guys ever to forget who they are. So we're going to talk about that a little bit more as we go into the uh, second part of this. I'm going to go ahead and take a break and we're going to be right back right after these messages. Donovan Sadiq Show. 